First story was posted one year ago by a Reddit user named Starry Marcus. I often visited my grandparents' home in Traverse City in northern Michigan during the summers with my parents. Traverse City, TC, is a beautiful place, produces 75% of the world's cherries, and was home to the Traverse City Regional Psychiatric Hospital, which operated from 1885 to 1989. Since the United States federal government officially deemed the hospital worthy of preservation for its historical significance, the buildings on the hospital grounds were guarded by patrolling security guards. The TC Psychiatric Hospital was massive, including 70 or 80 buildings of various sizes. Some buildings have now been converted into restaurants, gift shops, tourism traps, cafes, etc. But many remain empty and abandoned. Underneath the hospital is a sprawling brick tunnel system, which the hospital staff used to safely transport the patients from building to building in the frigid winter temperatures. I'm sure there were instances where the patients underwent cruel treatments or were subjected to the care of horrible doctors. But the TC Psych Hospital had a great reputation. Many teenagers, including myself at the time, were unashamedly fascinated with the hospital and its history. As a result, we would often break into abandoned buildings through unbarred windows or doors with pickable padlocks. While there were a few cases where teens would get caught and charged with breaking and entering, as long as we were stealthy, stuck to our safe entrances, and paid attention to the guards' patrol patterns, we could go in and out without worry. I'm not advocating for or trying to justify my criminal act of b &E, but breaking into the old hospital was almost a rite of passage for the TC teens. The hospital's interior was terrifying. There was old, stained, and broken equipment and furniture, crumbling floors and walls, vandalism, strange old building noises, and complete and utter darkness in the tunnels, basement, and lower floors. Using flashlights was too risky with the guards patrolling, so we often navigated the hospital by memory and our dimly lit phone screens. As you can imagine, our frightened youthful imaginations ran wild with horror stories, which is pretty iconic, considering we made up most of those stories. Unfortunately, during my last trip inside, I encountered something that terrified me to the point I swore off ever returning. The story takes place around 10 p.m. The moonlight was dim and most patrol guards left for the day. Clad in black, my friend Jason and I entered through the same window we always used and followed. Our regular path to one of the tall, jutting spires to sit by the windows that overlooked the entire city. There was only one thing different about this venture from our others. A new, faint, and unexplainable smoky odor. Not smoky like fire, but something more akin to incense. The smell was so faint we almost thought we were imagining it but it grew stronger as we got closer to our destination. Rather than taking the stairs that led up to the spire, we followed the smell down a different hallway until we reached a room with a deep red glow emanating from the doorway. Rather than doing the smart thing by leaving immediately, we couldn't resist the urge to walk closer and investigate. When we finally reached the room, I audibly gasped and felt Jason grip my wrist so hard his nails left marks on my skin. We found a large ring of red votive candles and burning incense circling a drawing of a pentagram with the sigil of Baphomet. In the center of the drawing was a dead, bloodied bird surrounded by black feathers. Bear in mind that I was raised devoutly Catholic, so seeing this image filled me with a sense of fear stronger and more paralyzing than any ghost sighting ever could. Later on that night, Jason told me I immediately started mumbling prayers, but I personally don't remember doing that. I wouldn't be too terribly surprised though. While the duration felt infinite, I'm not sure how long we stared at the occult scene before hearing a man's low and ominous voice behind us saying, Welcome, friends. I promise you that there was absolutely nothing friendly about the way the guy greeted us. 
Jason and I screamed bloody murder, whipped around and saw two nicely dressed but fazzled looking adult men smiling at us. The man in front of me held something in his hand and while I can't say for sure what it was, I remember thinking it was a knife at the time, which wouldn't be too crazy of a guess considering they recently sacrificed a bird. Jason and I sprinted past the two and I felt someone's fingers grab the back of my shirt. Thankfully, the occultist's hand didn't have a solid hold on me because I ducked and managed to escape his grip. The men shouted for us to stop running. We obviously didn't. We heard their footsteps chasing after us for a little while. But thankfully, Jason and I had broken into the hospital so many times that running through the unlit rooms, hallways and tunnels was no challenge. When we finally reached and vaulted through our escape window, the occultists were nowhere to be seen or heard. We kept running through the hospital grounds until we reached Jason's car, with no concern for the patrol guards. We would have rather gotten caught by the guards than the occultists. I puked twice in the parking lot, whether the cause was fear, sprinting non-stop for a mile and a half, or a combination of both. I'm not sure what would have happened if the occultists caught us, but I know for certain they weren't going to crack open a beer and sing Kumbaya by the candlelight. I'm not familiar with cultic practices or satanic rituals, so I'm not sure what the men were trying to do or if they were summoning something. Jason and I never returned to the hospital during the summer or any of the following summers. While we aren't close now that we're adults, I know that horrifying experience will keep us cemented in each other's memories until we die. Second story was posted 11 years ago by a Reddit user named Blue Hulk. I worked at a hospital, an inpatient psychiatric hospital. There was this boy, I think he was about 15. He originally came to our hospital in the winter time. He had been aggressive and really depressed, but other than that, he was your average teen. A couple months later, he was re-hospitalized. This time, he had a completely different presentation. His effect was all wrong. He was cold, distant, and he hardly remembered me. One night, after I had gone home, he went to use the bathroom. After being in there for like 20 minutes, the staff went looking for him. With some verbal prodding, he reluctantly opened the door to the bathroom. There he stood, completely nude save for the feces which painted him from head to toe. Oh, and the two payday-sized turds he ferociously gripped in each hand. He then gestured all Matrix style to the staff with a sort of a neo-Morpheus come-hither gesture. The staff donned the hazard suits and then ball charged him. He had smeared poop all over the walls and in the light switch. They sedated and restrained him that night. When I came in the next day, the nurses told me what had happened. I went to go check in on him, since I'd previously established a relationship and real rapport with him. He proceeded to ask me if I had ever been raped, had sex with a man, or seen God. Yeah, that was when I really understood the power of psychosis. And I now have more empathy, understanding, and respect for all of my majorly mentally ill clients.